black thing go from left to right, and I thought, I'm going to die out here. No one's ever going to know. I couldn't believe what my eyeballs were showing me. I'll, I'll never forget how evil the eyes were. It was horrible. I mean, I've never seen nothing that evil. It ran towards me at a, at a rate that I, I, I can't even explain. Turned and stared at me. And this look of, I just want to kill you. I want to say it was human, but it wasn't. He was, he, was, he was yelling at me to grab a gun, grab a gun. I was like, for what? He said, just grab a gun. And there's footprints all the way to the door of my house. It had went inside my garage all the way to the door. 911, what are you reporting? Jesus Christ, you better... Sir? See ya. Hello? Get somebody out here. What's going on now, sir? That son of a bitch is about six foot nine, I don't know. Do you see him now, sir? Yes, I'm looking right at him. Uh-oh. You're listening to Sasquatch Chronicles. Check us out online at sasquatchchronicles.com. If you've had an encounter, email me. My email address is wes at sasquatchchronicles.com. is kind of looking off in the distance and he was like do you feel that and I was like yeah I do it feels like we're being watched Jess and I see this thing looking over the rock it was I mean it just had this look on its face of pure curiosity my cousin is like we gotta go we gotta go it's time to go we get into the car and we speed away well, I turn around because I'm in the passenger seat and I see this thing following. And it kept up with a car that was going 60 miles an hour. Welcome to the show, everyone. Thanks for being here tonight. Got a great show planned for you tonight. That was Tori there in the intro. Uh, Her and Jessica were out in New Mexico and ran into a very strange creature. And I've actually done a few shows on this before. Uh, Some people call it a rake. Some people call it a ghoul. Uh, Some people think it's an alien. Uh, They're pretty rare, but I've actually had a few people, including law enforcement, that have seen this thing. And I'm not really sure what to make of it. It's very odd, very strange, uh, but I do believe people are running into this thing. And then we'll talk with Todd, who comes to us from Minnesota. Todd, back when he was younger, he was out hoping to make out with his girlfriend, and they were in kind of a a remote area, and uh, one of these creatures showed up and kind of spoiled the plans. A very, very fascinating account. If you've had an encounter and you'd like to be on the show, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out sasquatchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Let's jump into it tonight. I want to welcome Jessica to the show. Jessica, thanks for coming on. No problem. I have my fiance, Tori, here too. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, Tori, how are you? Hey, how are you, Wes? I'm good. Good. Thanks for being here, ladies. And I know I can't wait to, uh, I know there was a very strange encounter in New Mexico uh, that you both encountered, but maybe we'll start with Jessica. And if you would, Jessica, tell us about the encounter you had when you were in the military. Where where was it at? And walk us into what happened. So uh, this was my final duty station out in South Carolina, stationed at Sumter, or stationed Sumter at Shaw Air Force Base. And if anybody who's been out to South Carolina and around Sumter, or even in that general vicinity, there are back roads everywhere. There's not a whole, there's plenty of dirt roads, not a lot of street lights. There's really no lights at night. That whole state becomes pitch black at night. And it's a thick tree line. Like you can't even see, if you shine your light, you can only see maybe a foot or two in. It's very dark. At this point, I was stationed there and I was living there and I had an apartment and everything. I forget, I was coming home from Columbia. I had been on the way home. It's about an hour drive between there and my apartment. And I remember I took a back road because I didn't want to deal with the traffic. It was getting dark and getting dusk. So I took a back road to get home. Well, 
on this road, it's dark. It, there's, it's a dirt road. I'm just driving along. You know, it is what it is. And I want to say I'm probably 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes into my drive. And the only light that's there is my headlights. Was it down Screaming Eagle? It might, yeah, actually, it might have been down Screaming Eagle. Screaming Eagle. Um, and that road has a whole bunch of nonsense going on with it anyway. Anybody who's from there knows about Screaming Eagle. They have this, uh, there was a murder that took place there several years ago. There's a whole bunch of stuff surrounding that place. So, in general, I don't like being there in the dark, and I just find the whole state creepy. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm driving. I notice something on the side of the road. I'm heading, I'm eastbound, and this thing was going the same way. And it was, it was low to the ground on the left side of the road. And it was up in this tall grass. Like, the grass was really tall on the left side on the shoulder. And as I'm driving past, and I get closer to this thing, and I see somebody's LED headlights coming towards me. They're coming the opposite way. And their lights lit up everything. And uh, I saw this, I don't know what it was. I will be completely honest with you. I don't know what I saw, but it was this humanoid figure. It was human-shaped, but it, it's like the, it was low to the ground and crawling in a way that shouldn't be possible for any human to do, and it was, there was no clothing on it. And the skin had a leathery texture to it. Like, it looked like... A, like, if somebody had pulled its skin, it would have stretched. Like, one of those, like, sphinx cats, it just, it didn't have any hair on it. There was nothing there. And it, really creepy looking, very elongated limbs on it. And the way that it crawled, it just, I'm staring at it as I drive past, looking the whole way out my window. <laughs> and it just didn't register, it didn't make sense to me. And this thing, the shoulders sat higher than the head. Its head was basically facing forwards, but it, the contortions of this creature did not, they just, it's not normal. I've never seen anything crawl that way. I've never seen anything that moved like this. And it, you know, I drove past it and I saw it. And this was after our first encounter with things in New Mexico and just in general with other creepy stuff happening around my apartment. And I was like, okay, you know what? I've had enough of this. I've seen enough things. I'm going home. I'm not staying. <laughs> so I sped off and I called her on my Bluetooth and told her what I saw because she wasn't with me at the time. She was back in uh, Texas. Um, she had to go home to take care of something. And, you know, I'm just by myself. And this scared the living crap out of me. <laughs> um, yeah, I bet it'd scare me. And for the audience listening, Jessica, was this thing hairy or was it uh, hairless? Completely hairless. It, the skin looked like leather. Like, it looked very textured almost. Like, I could touch it and pull. It was just, it, it seemed really creepy. Like, the skin would stretch if I pulled it. I didn't see the face. I saw the head, and it was just tilted down. It was a very, it was a bald head, and it was not, it just didn't look right. I don't know what I saw, Wes. I'm still creeped. <laughs> Yeah, I would be too. Thank God you're in a car. And and, and we'll get to the uh, New Mexico incident with uh, you and Tori, but did it resemble the same sort of thing? I mean, you described long arms, long legs. The one in New Mexico, I didn't fully see. I saw the head duck down behind a rock formation, as she will tell you the story when we get to it. Um, when we were standing in the clearing, I just saw the head duck down, and I noticed there was something following us above on a ridge above us as we drove out of the Canyon. And I actually found out the name of the place that we went to, and it was called choke cherry Canyon out in New Mexico. Interesting. What, what do you think it was? I mean, what's your opinion? I realize you don't know, but if you were to guess, what do you think it was? <sighs> you know, Victoria thinks it's a rake. Personally, I think whatever we saw there and whatever we saw in South Carolina, whatever I saw in South Carolina, it was demonic in a way. Maybe demonic, maybe. It didn't feel like it was something, it just felt wrong. It didn't feel like it was supposed to be here. It just felt like something that shouldn't exist, but it does. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it other than I feel like it's something that, you know, this is something that possibly is a demonic presence. Heck, it could be a government experiment. I mean, I don't know. My pay grade wasn't that high, so. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. There's a lot of people that see this thing. 
And I was telling you, I mean, I think the rake, the term rake came out in about the 90s, but uh, people are describing seeing a ghoul, and that term's been around for years. Um, that would sound like a better name for it, to be honest. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the perfect way to describe it. It's a ghoul. Like, that's what, to me, that fits much better than, you know, calling it a rake. Yeah, I hear you. Well, and I'm curious, Tori, tell me about New Mexico. Tell us what happened and what were you guys doing? Because this is, this is pretty creepy, actually. I was creeped out the first time you told me. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely an experience. Um, my cousin and my grandma live out in New Mexico in the Four Corners area. And um, Jess and I had gone to go visit. I was on leave. Because she was on leave. So we went to go hang out with them. And it had been a while since I had seen my cousin. So he wanted to kind of spend some time with us and um, take us to his part of town, basically, which was around the Choke Cherry Canyon area. And um, he had a he had the Eche Cruiser, which he loved taking up into the mountains. So... Um, you know, begrudgingly, <laughs> we kind of agreed to go because it was really late at night, and I didn't know what the hell we were going to find out there, so I was really kind of skeptical. But we went anyway, so um, we went up there, and um, he was telling us all sorts of stories about the things that have gone on in Choke Cherry Canyon, um, one of the things being the, 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 um, the Navajo murders. Yeah, the murders of three Navajo men by um, high school teenagers that, I mean, these poor men were absolutely tortured. And, I mean, I won't go into too much detail because it's extremely explicit and extremely disgusting. But they were, you know, in the end, pushed off the ledge of one of the... Um, the bluffs? Yeah, one of the bluffs. And he pulled us up to the location right where... Um, they were pushed and right where they had died. It was just a sad feeling being in that area, but that's where kind of where we started feeling like we were being watched by something. So we just kind of, you know, ignored it and moved on. Well, he took us to this other spot where um, he was telling us that a few weeks prior to us going out there, him and a friend of his were out there and, um, because they, they like to do the rock climbing and things in their cars, they went out there, and there was a group of people climbing up this mountain. And they were, I mean, they were doing it by foot. They weren't in a car or anything like that. And um, they had all sorts of things with them, like boxes, all sorts of different types of things. I mean, they were just carrying all sorts of weird things. And he said that um, they would just try to be polite. And, you know, they said hi to a couple of them and they wouldn't respond. They would just look at him really strange and keep moving. And, you know, they thought nothing of it. Well, a couple days later, they went back to the same area. They found a destroyed ritual site. And there, I mean, by ritual site, I mean stacked stones, um, burnt candles, burnt, uh, what look like offerings, like um, burnt trees and things like that, branches, all sorts of different things. Um, didn't see any, like, creepy things like, you know, a sacrificed animal. But um, keep in mind, this is like late at night. So we're looking at this, and the only light that we have is from the car. And so, you know, her, all three of us are pretty creeped because it's dark outside, and, you know, we really don't know what to think about this. We're staying in a clearing looking at whatever. what looks like <laughs> the remnants of some kind of a dark ritual that exactly. I wouldn't want to be a part of. And I had no interest. Like, something just – I didn't want to go anywhere near this stacked pillar of stones. Like, it just – it gave me the creeps, something about it. I just didn't want to go near it. Right. I, I'm with you, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> I know better. <laughs> yeah. So what happens next, Tori? So my cousin is kind of looking off in the distance, and he was like, do you feel that? And I was like, yeah, I do. It feels like we're being watched. And so Jess starts taking off towards the car, and so Shane follows my cousin. And so, I mean, since they're going, I'm like, well, F this. I'm going to. <laughs> so, um we all kind of get back in the car and before we reach the car, Jess and I see this thing 
looking over the rock, like the rocks that were sort of behind this whole altar looking thing. And what I saw and what she saw was this, I mean, it was like a head. I mean, it looked like from what we saw, the eyes were completely black and sunken in like just sockets, I guess. Yeah, there were, I didn't see any eye glint or eye shine. Right. It was incredibly skeletal, incredibly pale, and a tall, I would assume, because it was behind, it was standing behind this rock unless it was, you know, had crawled up there somehow. But it was, I mean, it just had this look on its face of pure curiosity. And it had, it didn't have any sort of mouth. It was just incredibly pale with skeletal features like the sunken cheekbones and in the eyes. And so Jessica hauls even more ass into the car. <laughs> and so my cousin is like, we got to go. We got to go. It's time to go. So we get into the car and we speed away. Well, I turn around because I'm in the passenger seat and I see this thing following. It's, I mean, now I can see its full form. And it has ridiculously long arms and long legs. If I had to guess, this thing would probably be anywhere from, what, seven to eight feet tall, if, if not taller. If it stood up. If it stood up straight. But it never... was on all fours when it was running. And like I said, it never once felt threatening. It was incredibly curious as to why we were there, what we were doing there. And, you know, if it, it almost seemed like it was curious on whether or not we had an intent to harm the area. I mean, it was just the craziest thing, and it kept up with a car that was going 60 miles an hour through these canyons. I mean, it was incredibly scary, because I've never seen anything like this. It was charging on all fours, and not once did it look in the direction in which it was running. It kept its eyes on the car. That's creepy. What, so what happens next? Well, we pull out of the canyon finally, and it kind of stops like right on the edge at like the tree line where the canyon starts, the mountains. Yeah. And it just kind of stops. It's sitting at the top of this like little cliff that we had to climb up in the FJ Cruiser. It's sitting at the top of it, and it's there's some trees and scraggly bushes and shrubs nearby, and it's standing, or like it's whatever the hell it's doing, it's crouched thing, it's in there. And you can see it stopped right at the very edge. Like, it can't, it, it almost like it couldn't go up onto the main road. Because we finally hit paved road. We were back on, you know, paved road and we were heading back. And it just stopped. It just stopped. And it didn't follow us any further. Tori, what do you think that, that this thing was? What's your opinion? I mean, you know, from watching your show and everybody that I've heard describe rakes, that's the only thing that I can really you know, associate it with, because, I mean, the general consensus of what the rake could, is, or looks like, is, you know, pale, not a whole lot of features, and really, you know, has, like, the arms and legs, and that's what we saw, and, you know, Jess told me the story about what she saw in South Carolina, and that seemed to me to be the exact same thing, but I couldn't be too sure, I mean, I didn't get to see that one. Yeah, it's so interesting. I know a lot of people that see this thing, they'll describe the skin as being like a dead person. You know, that yeah. real... One that we saw in New Mexico was just like that. Mm -hmm. Very pale, dead, necrotic. I mean, I don't know, necrotic, but it just looked... Translucent. Yeah. And incredibly pale. I mean, I remember the entire entirety of the area was pitch black, but the moon was full enough to where it highlighted this thing's skin, and it stuck out like a sore thumb. It was so pale and so bright. I mean, it was... I mean, it looked like it was glowing. It was so pale. Did you guys ever think about going back? I would um, love to, to be honest. You know, after a few years, and, you know, after listening to the show and everything, you know, and getting into it, and hearing all these different accounts about it, you know, and then realizing we also have a third person who would go with us, we've considered going back. I wouldn't mind going back and taking a second look now, um, especially around where the Choke Cherry Canyon massacre happened. It was when we were there is where it began because we were that was about ten minutes away from the ritual site. 
the original site was further uphill on the up in these canyons and we were at the base of the cliff where they were pushed and you know her cousin had said before he had tried to go up onto this cliff and he, you can get up there from the other side where we were at it was about a 25 to 30 foot sheer straight up cliff side and it was kind of um concave i guess you could say it was i mean not concave but it was like surrounded by a wall of these rocks and if the light hits it a certain way you know you can i mean it illuminates it you can see the wall just fine but he said one of these times he was just trying to go up this wall and or go up to the wall and for some reason his headlights just couldn't illuminate it it was just completely pitch black i don't know if that's you know the rake would have anything to do with that but I mean, he's seen Skin some walkers. incredible things out there. Ugh. He's got some stories. Yeah, New Mexico is a strange place. You know, sorry to all my listeners in New Mexico. You guys got a weird state, but there's a <laughs> lot. Of, there's a lot of weird things out there. I mean, there's a lot of very odd. I mean, I've heard some very odd encounters with entities out there, and I don't know what to make of it. I've never seen a rake. Uh, most I've looked into it. And, you know, rake, ghoul, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the Native Americans have a name for it. They call it something else. Um, I've never heard of it really harming anyone. Uh, just I've heard some Native Americans say that they'll play games with you. They'll joke with you. They'll not joke, but you know what I mean? Like, they'll trick you. They're tricksters. Uh, mm -hmm. But no one's ever really said that they've been harmed by one. I, I just the appearance of what you describe and what other witnesses have described. Uh, I don't know what that thing is. I mean, is it an alien? Is it like a science experiment gone wrong? Is it because everyone I talk to and I'll ask you guys this. Most people I talk to say it's very physical. It wasn't like a ghost. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it definitely had texture. It was three dimensional. This was not something that was wispy. This had this could put a footprint on the ground if it stepped or it would leave. We should have gone True. back to look for... We should, have. <laughs> we should have gone back. But, you know, it's it definitely wasn't a wispy form. Like, if I could touch it, and if I could go over there and touch it, I feel like I could have. You know, and I feel like I would have felt a being there. But I don't... I have no idea. I mean, it was just the weirdest thing. But, like I said, he didn't... It didn't seem threatening whatsoever. Whatsoever. Just creepy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the other thing, a lot of times people, and I don't know if you guys noticed this in your encounter, and if you didn't, it's okay. A lot of times people say they have real sharp, jerky motions. Yeah, almost like um, it was moving in 32 FPS. <laughs> that's the best way I can describe it, is its FPS was low. I mean, that's exactly what it looked like, but when it charged, it was fluid motion. I mean, it, was, it looked like an, uh, the way an animal would run. Really? I mean, it just... It just was a humanoid-like thing. Right, with these massive appendages, like, running in a way that should not be possible for any humanoid or anything on this planet. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just something that, the fact that I've... We've seen two of them. Right. <laughs> and it's just... And they're on opposite ends of the country. Mm -hmm. And it just... It was unsettling. It was very much so something that, you know, I saw the head duck down because it didn't... Whatever it was did not want us to see it. It was trying to stay hidden to a degree, but it was also trying to investigate, you know, and size up, check us out. And it, when she said, do you see that? You know, her and I both looked and the head, I saw the head immediately duck down and she, she got more of a look at it than I did. I just saw a shape fall real quick behind the rock. It kind of made me wonder, you know, if it's just curious in nature, if it was in that area trying to maybe protect it or, you know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, you, I mean, you could be onto something. I mean, who knows what that altar was, if it was a bunch of Satan worshippers out there, or, you know, God knows what was going on with that. It is yeah. strange that you find it in that same area, though, kind of wandering around that area. Makes you yeah, wonder. Exactly. And, you know, the... Um, oh, I don't know where I was going with that. I completely lost it. The, <laughs> the cousin had said he's never seen anything like that in his entire life of living in this area, you know, out in Four Corners area, he's never seen anything like that. You know, all, all three of us were like, what the, what, what the F is that? You know, what is that? And I'm in the back seat getting jostled around because, you know, it's off-roading and he's going 60 
And you know, it's, it's pretty bad. I thought he was going to flip the car. Mm -hmm. Like it was, he was going, he was trying to peel out of that, get out of that Canyon quick. And it, I don't know. It's something that he's like, I've seen skinwalkers. I've seen, I've shot a skinwalker and all this stuff. And he, he's like, I've never seen anything like that. And, you know, he told us the story about him getting, about him shooting one of these skinwalkers. It left the hair on the back of my neck standing up because, you know, I had never heard of anything like this in my whole life. You know, I grew up in California in pretty populated areas. I've been out in the woods and I've gone camping and whatnot, but I've never, never had any experiences or encounters in my whole life until after I left home and started going on adventure. <laughs> She's trying to say until she got around me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. And I appreciate you guys listening to the show. Um, let's get down to business. Jessica, what do you think Sasquatch is? Honestly, I think that I'm convinced that it's a physical being. I know it's a physical being. I just, I feel like it is just from everything that's been described, all the stuff that, you know, I've listened to over the years and whatnot. And it's just kind of, I think it's, I think it's real. I think it's either, I'm not sure why the government would want to hide it other than maybe to, protect either protect it or to keep everyone from freaking the hell out if they saw one or people going to look for it and getting hurt because these things are friggin' wild animals they are they will kill you they will rip you apart like i've i remember listening to the story the other night about the guy who was um i forget if it was his friend i think it was his friend and he rolled up to the guy's truck because the guy was missing and the guy was bent in half and shoved underneath you know the dash and i was like oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow, no, that's, I want nothing to do with it. I don't want anything, I don't want to find one. I mean, I'd, I'd like to go hear one, but I don't want to, you know, have one close to me enough to where it can do something like that to me. And I think that it's something very dangerous. I could see it being a government experiment gone wrong, and I could see the dog man being the same way. Something, those are just not, it's not normal. It just doesn't feel normal. It doesn't feel right. It just feels like it shouldn't exist. So it's. I think it's some kind of a hybrid or a experiment. Yeah, you may not be too far off. Thank you for your service too, Jessica, by the way. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Tori, what about you? What do you think Sasquatch is? You know, I really don't think I have a definitive answer for you, Wes, because, I mean, the fact that these are seen all over the world, I just don't think I can boil it down to just a simple government experiment. Um I definitely do think that they're a hybrid of something. I mean, they have to be, but the fact that they are so intelligent, I mean, not to say that the common gorilla isn't, but these seem to be on a, a level far beyond that. I mean, I don't want to say that, you know, their intelligence is on a human's level, but I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I would love to, I mean, you know, I hate saying I would love to see one because, I mean, they're dangerous, of course, but I can't deny the fact that I would love to see one just so I could get an idea of what it could possibly be. Because, I mean, I want to think that it is just an experiment gone wrong, but I just don't think I can bring myself <laughs> to believe that, and it's got to be something. Yeah, it's so hard to say. And that's why I love that question because everyone has a different answer and no, nobody's wrong because no one knows. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But it's a fascinating account. You know, the the thing you guys ran into, I wish I had a great answer for you on it. Um, I, I've had a few accounts of them on the air and I, I don't know. I really don't know what that thing is. It, like I said, everyone says it's physical. It wasn't like a spirit, but it wasn't quite like an alien either. You know, what your typical gray would look like. It's got this weird sunken in eyes, dead skin, long arms, like what uh, you both described. Long legs, long, you know, and really skinny. And Wrong movements, just something that shouldn't move like that. Yeah. It's bizarre. I mean, I had, like, we had to speed home. I had to draw it. Like, I had to draw out what I saw because I was afraid of losing that image in my mind. But at the same time, how can you? <laughs> I mean, I have that drawing here somewhere. I think it's on my iPad, actually. But, I mean, this happened three years ago this year. Like, it would have mm -hmm. been Thanksgiving of 2016 yeah. when I came home from leave to go. And we just drove up to New Mexico for a trip. And it, we just encountered this. And it was the craziest thing. 
and it, you know, her cousin told us stories in the backyard when we were sitting there talking one night around a fire pit in her grandma's backyard. He told us about his encounters with skinwalkers. He's got some stories, Wes, that I feel like would make the hair on your arm stand up and on your neck stand up. It's, you know, ones that have, he's had one keep up with a moving rig. This rig was going, what, 65, 70 miles an hour down a highway, and mm -hmm. there's a Native American boy running running faster than the truck on the side of the road and then it suddenly jumped out in front of it and he can't slam on his brakes in time and out the driver's side it was like an eagle it f shifted into an eagle and it flew off and he just didn't know what to make of it like i have chills thinking about it. like all of i, I have like goosebumps thinking about this because it's so creepy <laughs> yeah you should send him my email i'd love to talk to him Oh, we definitely will, because uh, you and him could probably talk for hours. He's got so many stories to tell, and they are really good. <laughs> like, there's something about it, just there's, I don't know, I feel like I'm more, I'm definitely afraid of Bigfoot, but I feel like I'm more afraid of, <laughs> I'm more afraid of skinwalkers <laughs> and Wendigos. <laughs> Yeah, I don't blame you. Like I said, I mean, those I've heard a lot of weird skinwalker stories, and I've talked to a lot of natives about it. Most Native Americans will tell you it's witchcraft. Um, the whole thing is witchcraft, and it makes you wonder, how could something change? You know what I mean? How could something go from this to this? It's bizarre. I really appreciate you ladies coming on and taking the time to share your encounters. No definitely. It was definitely an honor to be here. Oh, yeah. We, we love the show, and I'm so glad that my coworker who came four years showed me the show, and I, we both became, I sat there, we played at work. <laughs> well, very, very cool. Thank you again. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Wes. to the show todd thanks for coming on anytime yeah i really appreciate you being here i know you actually had an encounter in uh, minnesota and we'll get to that in a minute but um tell, tell me about these reoccurring dreams you were having well when i was between eight and nine years old i had terror dreams of uh of a what we call today a bigfoot i mean that's the only thing i can tell you what it looked like it was this like a silhouette of a very hairy, tall being that was shape of a a, a human, but very hairy. And, and all the, the terror part is there's a white illuminating light behind him. And I didn't see his face. I didn't see his mouth. It was just a silhouette and, and it's screaming at me. And in my dreams, I just froze. And, um, I shared it with my mom and I told her uh, that these dreams are happening more often and this thing is really scaring me. And she told me to stand my ground and point at it and yell that I am not afraid of you. And it just went away. It's like, like air uh, escaping from a balloon, that noise, and then it's done. I know it sounds corny, but that's exactly what it sounded like. And ever since then, I've never had a, another recurring dream like it um, until after I had a trauma experience uh, in Duluth, Minnesota in uh, 1983. Yeah, and we'll get to that in a minute, but I want to ask you about the dreams. One thing that's common with a lot of kids I talk to off the air is the same recurring dream after either one comes up to their window or they've been scared in some way. Uh, it's very common for kids to, um, I hear it time and time again from kids, and they can't get, it's the same dream. It's the thing chasing them, the thing coming after them. Mm -hmm. um, did you have an encounter when you were a kid that you remember? Or did you ever talk to the, your mom? The, the only scary encounter that I had that could match that scare was I was laying in bed, and uh, typically uh, I had my closet light on, and back then, my closet doors looked like shutters. So when the doors are closed, you just have a little bit of light in the bedroom. And when I woke up, uh, I was looking at the closet doors and the lights were off. 
and typically I had my door open, but the door was closed, and I just thought it was a little bit odd. And then in the room, uh, my eyes were well adjusted because I woke up from sleeping, and uh, I couldn't tell you exactly how late. I know it was late because everybody in the house was sleeping. And I remember having uh, my back to the wall because the reason is is because when I faced the wall and went to sleep, I always had dreams. So when I had my back to the wall, I felt that I was in control of not having a dream. But this time when I woke up, I was laying there on my left side, and the blankets were down by my hips. And uh, something that I can only explain that is... It was like as if somebody punched me in my back with a fist with such force that my chest pounded. And when I said pounded, I mean, it is like, like a drum. And uh, I couldn't hear anything. My senses were, I was trying to listen to anything at the edge of the bed. It was just a full-size bed. And I was just trying to listen so hard. I had a window above me, but it's impossible for anybody to get through it. I just laid there. I was frozen in fear. And then I slowly crept the blankets up, up to my face. And I kept staring at the closet because I know that was my exit. If I can throw these blankets and run as fast as I can towards that closet and then hang a right and go out to my, in the hallway, the next right would be mom and dad's bedroom. So I lay there, nothing, still nothing. I got the blankets up, and I was trembling with fear. And and uh, I thought for sure, maybe after I told this beast to leave me alone, that maybe he just got his last jab at me. And that's the only thing, that's the only perspective that I could put it in. So at that moment, I threw the blankets back, and I flew towards the closet doors, took that sharp right, opened up the door, ran in my mom and dad's room, screaming bloody murder, just trying to explain to them what happened. I was crying and everything, you know. So that's the only time the fear was just as worse as that. Now, 1983, here I am again, that same terror. But it was this was for real. Yeah, and, and I, I'm uh, really curious. Yeah. I, I really would I, maybe talk with your mom or your dad. Maybe there was something going on in that property that you were at, that you were seeing this thing come up to the window. I mean, I'm speculating, yeah. but... Um, well, I'm 55. I lost both my parents four years ago. They oh, died I'm sorry to hear that. Well, we go on. No, now they see you. me in spirit, and I'm happy, and they can watch me do whatever I'm doing, and just I'm okay with that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, let's go back to 1983. Um, tell yes, us what you were doing and walk us into what happened, if you would. Well, my girlfriend and I were driving along Skyline Drive, and and um, we were just kind of being uh, romantic because we were just we we're new in love, you know. Yeah. And uh, and it was late at night, and a lot of kids we go driving along. Skyline Drive and Duluth, which is midway up the mountainside. And uh, it's just a scenic lookout to Lake, Lake Superior. And Duluth is just so beautiful with the lights and everything. And and there's a place called Rice's Point. It's just below a tower. We just sat there and say, hey, I said, um, how about you and I walking on the golf course? Because it's so beautiful with the moon. The moon was full that night. It was just amazing. Let's go for a walk, you know, and I've golfed that golf course a dozen times with some friends and I, and I knew it pretty well, you know. So uh, we pulled up to the parking lot and we had to cross the road and then walk by the clubhouse and then just walk straight up uh, maybe 400 yards. And it was kind of a, a slope. Maybe it started at um, 30 degrees and just kind of moved its way up and towards the top it got up to maybe 50 degree slope and then there you were on the green you know so uh we sat at top of the green and we we're just talking we we're just looking at the moon and, and the beautiful clouds that were 
just kind of, and the, and the moon was shining off Lake Superior, and, and we were just kind of talking about all that and how beautiful it was. So quiet, there wasn't you didn't hear nothing, and with the moonlight you can see on the golf course, the landscape was just tinted enough that you could see all the way to the clubhouse. And um, we were sitting right next to each other, and uh, I think the temperature I would say was probably in the 70s, lower 70s. So it was it was a really decent night. And if we look left, you can see the tower. It's like this tower. Tours go up. It's like I don't know, eight floors, and then you can really take a look at the city from way up there and look around. It's quite nice. It's called Anger Tower. And I was at Anger Park Golf Course. It was just not even three blocks away, you know. But then I was up in the woods, too, so it was just, I was looking just north at it. And I uh, heard this, this, this tree behind us, about 50 yards or so. It was right over my right shoulder between us, and I'm looking straight up, and I'm looking back there in this big oak tree. It was thrashing left to right. And all of a sudden, I hear this grunting in it. It's like, you know, like a chimpanzee, you know, just stirring it up, going around in there. Then the chimpanzee got louder and louder, and it was really screaming. And then right at that point where it was really thrashing, it just this, this, um, I guess the only way I could describe the noise is, and I know it. It's it's it was it was. Um, I can imagine if it was loud, if I was standing right next to that tree, but I'm 50 yards away. It was so loud. It just it just, it hit me right to the core, and I looked at her, and and I think that's the you know I've dealt with terror in my life, you know, and and I didn't. That scream was so familiar just from my dreams when I was younger, but I didn't, I wasn't thinking that then, not at the time. Now I am, you know, there's so many times you search through as you go through life, you know, try to find things that can match that. I just can't match that. I watched a big foot show on TV. There ain't nothing on that show that even comes close to what I heard. And was, started, it, was it screaming you know, at you, Todd? Is that the vocal it was doing? Oh, yeah, man. We were the only ones out there. That thing, it was like a lion's roar and a, and a silverback gorilla just pissed. I looked at her, and I, I whispered to her. I said, stand up. And I said, grab my hand and don't let go. I whispered that to her because whatever was there, I didn't want it you know, to hear me. If it heard me, you know, and uh, and we ran, we ran fast. I was on track team in high school, so yeah, me and I ran pretty fast, and uh, she kept up with me, and uh, I never let go of her hand, and I felt the tears going down my face, and uh, I'm looking at her, and she's just looking straight ahead like me, running. <sighs> And all of a sudden, I heard this thud, this sickening. Just, I mean, when I say sick, I mean it's just, I mean, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm going down the slope. I mean, this thing is up and over by the green to the left, you know. And I'm like, this thing was, boom. And I couldn't help then glance over my right shoulder to see what came out of that tree. And I saw this nightmare. Then I saw this nightmare standing there. And I'm like, oh, my God. I started running some more. And then I, uh, before I started uh, to turn my head away, I looked one glance more. And it took its fist and it just slammed it down in the ground and leaned forward and just started hauling. And it, what's weird, it didn't, like, come directly at, at us. It, like, it flanked straight across and then came at us. It was weird. And then... uh. I think I saw glowing eyes, but, you know, in my nightmares back when I was little, 
you know, that's what I saw. And then the more you think about it, the more you think maybe, maybe I didn't see red eyes. You know, your mind starts playing tricks on you, you know? Yeah. And um, all I can hear is that thing just, woof, 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 woof. and I'm like, oh, my God. I knew, I just felt that we were going to, like, die or something's going to grab us. So I just knew that I had to get this girl to the car. That's my girlfriend. I had to get her to the car. That's the only thing I, and, and get out of here. The tears was because I thought we were going to die. I really did. I really, I really did. I didn't think we were going to make it out of there. And um, the grunting kind of stopped about halfway point. And then we started getting up to uh, the clubhouse on, on the left side. And we ran across the road. We got in the parking lot and I opened up my car door. And I leaned over and I opened up hers. At the same time, I'm trying to start my car. The minute she got in, I popped the clutch and we were out of there. We were, we were tearing out of there. And I looked over my left shoulder and and this thing is hauling on the right side of the um, clubhouse. But when I was running, it was I was traveling on the left side of the clubhouse. But if I'm looking at it, it's coming on the right side right for me. And I thought for sure that thing was going to hit my rear quarter panel. And, you know, and when I was trying to lean over to open up her uh, car door, she was slamming her hands on my sunroof. I swear she was going to bust through it. And she was screaming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And um, it was just a nightmare all over again, you know. And after we got out there, you know, the craziest thing is that we never told anybody. You know, and we drove down Skyline. We're going like, you know, 60 miles per hour. And, and that's fast for that that way, that two-lane highway on that ridge of that mountain. And uh, we get towards town to a McDonald's, and, we're, and we ordered a Coke, and we both sat down, and we're just looking at each other, and both of us peed ourselves. And we were just, you know, because she had to go to the bathroom, and she was telling me she peed herself, and I told her, I said, I did too. You know, I said, what was that? I, you know, we're look, looking at each other, and she goes, I don't know. And I said, yeah, no one's ever going to believe us, you know, and and I knew in my heart, I, I couldn't tell my dad about it. My dad was a police officer for that city, you know, and I didn't want to tell him I was up there because I know in my heart that I didn't have any business being up there. You know, just we were so vulnerable and I thought it was so foolish what I did. It was such a foolish thing, you know, going up there. And not even, you know, being so carefree and not thinking first. But I was, I'm in love, you know. I don't. I, I'm trying to impress a girl that I was in love with. Yeah, you know? I get it. I get and, it. Uh, but yeah, but I couldn't tell my dad. I, I couldn't tell him because of that fact. Because I know, I know what I would have heard. He would have been screaming at me for, you know, you know, just verbally putting me down, you know, for going up there, because, you know. Like, what the hell are you doing that for? Use your head, you know? And, and I didn't use my head, and I didn't want to admit that. I didn't want to use, I use my head. I think we all can relate with that, you know? Do things that are stupid things sometimes. Yeah, no you know? doubt. No doubt. But, uh, yeah. And so I never told my dad. I never told anybody because I didn't want to get back to my family, you know? I didn't want anybody to know I was up there. So... As we were dating, you know, I just easily started thinking that maybe uh, trying to make sense of this. And I thought, honest to God, I thought, you know, she's a, she was an uh, Indian girl and uh, Cherokee. And she's just really pretty and just sweet and everything. I, I truly thought maybe um, the Indian chiefs were really the ones that sent that thing to stop whatever might have started. It may had, if we had a little bit more time, well, I'm sure, you know. Can I ask you, Todd, What, from what you remember, can you describe what you saw? Yeah, I can. It, uh, it, was, it was black, it, it, and it seemed to have short, shorter legs in the back and a smaller rear, 
but as a king, you know, if it's if it's looking at me from the tree, and the moon is kind of playing off on that too, you know. And the shoulders were extremely wide. I just it, the head was small, but the shoulders were like big as tires. It was just like a silverback gorilla, but big, like like. Not King Kong. King Kong's got a, a big head. It's had a small, smaller head. It just, it like you know, like a football player ready to, you know, ready to uh, get in formation and getting ready to go. That's kind of the stance it was at. This thing bolted, <laughs> and um, yeah, it's a terrifying night. I'm surprised you got a second date, dude. No, I dropped her. <laughs> I didn't, yeah i broke up with her because I, I, there's just no way i thought i thought really i did you know i never dated any girl for my life and i respect you know the uh the heritage 100 percent. it's just i really did believe that you know this was a spiritual thing you know that is a warning you know and that's how i took it i just broke up with her and and then on facebook after all these years was it 36 years later so you know, here we are. I, you know, I just see if she was still out there and and if she remembered anything about it. And lo and behold, she only lives maybe 60 miles away from that city. I live down on the Gulf of Mexico in southern Alabama. And she lives up there just about 60 miles away in uh, Cloquet, Minnesota. And I'm like, you know, what did you remember? She said, I'm just glad that we were young and we could run <laughs> she says you don't remember much now her back was to it you know she she didn't look back once she just looked at me because she was scared so her focus was me when and, and my voice was calm and i was calm to her you know what do you make of that behavior i'm assuming you this thing's physical and it's obviously pissed and what do you make of that behavior well I make it that um, I talked to her about the whole incident, you know, recently on Facebook. And I said, what do you think? And she goes, well, you weren't getting any anywhere that night anyway, because I was on my monthly. I went, oh, maybe that's why it was pissed. Maybe, maybe it smelt it or maybe it sensed it and it just went crazy. Who knows? So then I was thinking, well, maybe that's why it was not pissed. It was just excited whatever we got out of there so maybe you know whatever so <laughs> does that make sense it makes sense to me yeah it makes sense I understand you know you're so maybe that's why the behavior was like that did you get the impression it could have caught you if it wanted to oh yeah i did i thought we were dead yeah and most definitely without a doubt in my mind i'm thinking it well oh. Here's the part that I don't get is if we're midway, I don't hear it so much anymore. And we get up to the clubhouse and she's slamming, she's saying it's coming. But from that other half to the car and I didn't hear it, where did it go? What did it do? Did it just stand there and watch us and gave us a head start? But why was it still so mad by the time we get to the car? You know what I mean? What happened with that last half? I don't know. Cause I never looked back. I didn't look back until after I got in the car and took off. I looked out my window and it was coming, coming on that, uh, right side of that clubhouse crossing that road right from my car. So, yeah. Now, one you question, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. Uh, one question I want to ask you, and I mm. realize this is me asking you to speculate cause there's no way you could truly know, but why yes, do you sir. think it didn't, didn't attack you? Why do you think it, was playing more or less cat and mouse with you and didn't actually get its hands on you. Man, I go through that in my brain all the time. I'm thinking maybe a higher power. God maybe had something to do with it. Maybe a guardian angel had something to do with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's so hard to say because this thing's coming at you. And, and, and you do hear that behavior a lot from people. They'll talk about how... Uh, the same chase them, but didn't actually catch them, didn't actually get a hold of them. Sometimes they do, but most of the time they'll run you out like they're going to get their hands on you 
And at the last moment, they back off. Not really back off, but they don't. Because this thing could mode you, you and your girlfriend down oh, yeah. in two seconds. Oh, yeah. Two. You know, my brother had uh, a sighting um, four years prior to that in uh, in Duluth. It was in the Heights area, which is over the over the hill, maybe four miles north from my incident at a place called Ready Mix. It was a cement factory. It's not there anymore. But um, him and his buddies were walking up the trail behind Ready Mix. I don't know. Maybe going up there to smoke a tuner. That's what they did. And um, they were walking up the path. And my brother said to me, um, this year he told me about it. And he said, um, there was something up in a tree. He said it was big. And it was pissed. And that thing, he said that thing came down that tree like nothing, like fast. And started booking towards them. And he said it was pushing trees down in front of it. And he said, he never heard anything like that. He said it was like an elephant. And uh, they all ran. I mean, the guys that he was hanging out were pretty tough. You know, pretty, pretty tough. You know, for high school, the guys were pretty tough. But to run, I had to have seen something. And I remember being a kid, them uh, coming up to my parents' door. I was sleeping. I get ready for school in the morning, you know. They come through the door, and I hear my brother and Keith and David just so emotional and so loud and talking about what they saw. And, you know, it was frightening to hear it. I never came out to the kitchen to actually, I'm supposed to be sleeping, so I'm just got my ear up by my bedroom door just kind of listening. And uh, then uh, this year my brother told me all about it a little bit closer, a little bit more in depth, and I'm like, yeah. And I told him my story for the first time, what happened to me down in uh, just south from where he was, you know. Makes you wonder if it's the same amazing. one. Oh yeah, you think you know something? I'm I'm really thinking about calling the uh, the local zoo around there to find out if they had any uh, silverback gorillas that went loose for any particular reason. You know what I mean? Or did they find them? Or you know, really? I mean, that would be in the paper. I mean, wouldn't it? You I mean, would if they think really so. did lose one, that you'd think they'd find it by now. You know what I mean? So who knows? Can I ask you real quick about your encounter? How big do you think that thing was? Oh, easy. I would say if it if it stood up eight, nine, eight, ten, eight, ten, maybe. I mean, but the legs seem to be short, but the from the rear all the way up to the shoulders, that looks like it looked like at least six feet. It was crazy big. It was crazy big. Thank God no one got hurt, you know what I mean? Especially with, sometimes these things do go off, and it's hard to figure out why they're going off. But that yell is unmatched, Wes. I've been listening to Sasquatch Chronicles for two weeks, and y'all are about the closest description of what I heard. And when people describe what they hear on your show, that's what I heard, if, if I had to describe it. It, I mean, when it yelled, I mean, it was like inside of its gut, you know, from deep down within, just, rawr, I mean, it was just, oh, my God. Have you ever heard it in the wood screen? Yeah, I've actually heard the, uh, I described it as like a lion roaring. And I was, yes, sir. I was like Without a mile, a I was about a mile away and I, I felt yeah. it. I mean, I maybe not a mile, but it was a good distance away. And mm-hmm. I was on high alert after that. I was like, is there a lion loose up here? Or I mean, yeah. it was that powerful. I get what you mean when, when you're, mm-hmm. they have a way of when they vocalize, it's like in hit with a baseball bat. Oh yeah, man. He's got your attention. 100%. My senses were just crystal. And you know, here's the crazy thing. Is my defense was calm. You know, my I was calm. I was receptive, and I was calm. And that's that's a that's a good trait to have in a, in a situation like that. 
you know, I did end up joining the Navy and, you know, stuff like that. And there were some situations where I had to be that calm. Yeah, you freak out afterwards when there's no danger. Right, man. Yeah. How could that not haunt you? you But what if that car didn't start, you know? What if I couldn't open her door? What if this thing just, you know, took her and left me sitting there? Would I go in the woods to get her? Hell yeah, I would. Because I already knew I was going to die in the beginning. So what's the difference if I went out to go get her? I mean, what's the difference? At least I'm trying to help her. I already knew I was going to die anyway, right? So what's the difference? Go get her. Yeah, this thing was, I, you know, and then when she told me on Facebook this year that, you know, she said, yeah, you ain't going to get anywhere that night because I had my, you know, my monthly. And I'm like, wow, man, that, that really pulls, that really made me think. I'm like, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe that had a lot to do with it. But when we walked up there and it was so quiet, maybe that thing was sleeping in there. Maybe I woke it up. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, sure it was there before say. before we got there. I mean, right? Yeah, it's hard to say sometimes what sets these things off. And I think a lot of times you don't have to do anything to set them off. And I've heard from a lot of people yeah. who are, uh, you know, think they're the friendly forest giants. And then they have one bad encounter. It changes their whole opinion of these things because oh, yeah. the whole atmosphere right. can change on a dime with these things. Uh, what, do, what do you think that they are, Todd? What do you think that Sasquatch is? Something prehistoric, kind of like the alligator. It's still here. I think that thing's prehistoric, and it's just adapted with all the changes. I keep going back to Neanderthal. Can you imagine how tough those guys were? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've thought about that, too. My my only issue with the Neanderthal theory, Neanderthals were pretty short. They were big and stocky, but your average Neanderthal... Mm -hmm. Five 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 six. They weren't real tall. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I understand why you go that route, though. I I yeah. completely get it. I've thought about that many times. And who really knows? I mean, honestly, Neanderthals could have been yeah. seven feet tall. Um, I don't put a yeah. lot of weight in anymore to what uh, the mainstream tells you. I mean, who knows? The, the only truth I know is what I see and what I heard. You know, and what I read and stuff. I just kind of like it's just so out there. But I have an open mind and. With me, it's got to happen in front of me. I got to see it. Otherwise, it's just hearsay, and there's no sense getting all wound up over that. You know? Yeah, I get it. So, do you, and I didn't mean to cut you off when you were answering. So, so, you think it's more of a Neanderthal, more human like, I'm assuming? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, when you hear that they're, they're everywhere, maybe, maybe they are, you know? They have to adapt in certain climates. I mean, that's why you got the Yeti as being a you know a bottomless snowman and all that crap. You know. Yeah, but it never changed your opinion as far as going out camping or anything, huh? Dude, I don't go camping anymore. I just don't because I don't want to be in that predicament again. I really don't. I mean, when something like that shakes you, you just don't want to put yourself in there again and I don't have any reason to go looking for it but if I ever have another if I ever see it again or I'll just I ain't gonna shoot it I'm just gonna stand there I mean I'm you know I don't we got cameras everybody's got a camera on their phone you know snap a picture of it whatever yeah I I don't know know. I just I I I can't make it up you can't make this up yeah, no, I you get know. it, man. I get it. I, I feel for you, especially being a young guy out there and uh, mm-hmm. having this happen. And it does happen a lot. There's a lot of people who are, uh, you know, teenagers out um, mm-hmm. making out in the car, and all of a sudden this thing shows up. Uh, they seem to oh, be definitely. really curious about that sort of thing. They seem to be very focused on that sort of thing. And sometimes you get aggression. Like they will, I, well, I can think of many encounters with, Mm -hmm. them coming up to people making out in cars and they'll either slam the car, push the car, throw rocks at the car, walk right up, look in the window, start growling. Um, They're pretty ballsy in in situations (laughs) like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, they are. You know, what's interesting is 
I mean, is there a connection when I was like eight or nine? Is there a connect? Was that a warning that that was happening to me in my future that I need to remain calm when it happens and learn how to stand? You know what I mean? How life is, it's just, who, who, who has terrors like that? Kids that you know? have encounters with these things have terror dreams like that. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't see this thing when I was a kid. I saw it in my dream. I've heard that too from little kids where they claim they never saw it, but they have a reoccurring dream and the parents will say it's around the property. And I think kids block it out. Sometimes when they're so scared, they block, we do that as adults. Uh, We block it out. Well, you know, when when I was little, my brother and I, we built forts out in the woods. We go into this woods called 10 acres and had a dirt factory out there. And I'd ride my bike out there. I was probably a good half mile into the woods, you know, dirt factory, ain't nobody around. And then you look at the woods and over the hill was just a bunch of rocks and just the woods were just jet black, you know, canopy, pine trees. There was a time when I was building my fort out there. I was bringing some nails and some hammers and some hand saws. And I was, you know, between, shoot, I was between, um, Nine and between nine and thirteen, right around there, dragging all my dad's tools out there and thinking I'm going to build a fort on some popple trees. And and uh, my brother came out there with his friends. They had a fort down a little bit farther. And when it winter time, they all go in there with their snowmobiles and they have fires inside of them and their wood stoves and whatnot. But he came up to me, and, and they thought it'd be funny if they just left me out in the woods all by myself. They just left me. And I, I just didn't know how to get out of there. And it was getting darker and darker. And, uh, I mean, there, there was nothing out there. You know, it's just that I was in there. And I didn't want to be in there when it was dark. I was scared. And then they came back later. It was about 8, 9 o'clock at night. And then they came and got me. I was mad as hell. You know, he thought it was funny, but... Yeah, I gotta love brothers. Yeah, right. I know it's a traumatic encounter, Todd. I mean, yeah. it would traumatize me, to be honest with you. And I really think, I mean, and I could be wrong, but I really think there's something to those dreams you were having as a kid. Most kids don't dream like that, unless they're, right. I guess you could say, a form of PTSD or... Uh, it's a traumatic event they're reliving. I'm telling you, I've heard it many times over uh, exactly what you're talking about. I've heard many little kids mm-hmm. um, from 8 to 14 tell me very similar stories. And some mm-hmm. of them will say they've never seen a Bigfoot. But here's the deal. It wasn't that thing in my dream because in my dream it was standing in front of me. It was like 10 feet away screaming. It's just freaking screaming. Do you think that white light indicated that that could have been the moon that night that was out there? When this thing happened, maybe. I mean, that goes through my brain. But it wasn't the same image. This image here was, you know, it came down and it was in a silverback gorilla stance. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Not standing 10 feet away from me. No, I get it. Who knows? But maybe I think the message is I had to be calm. When this incident came up, I had to be calm. And I I was calm, brother. Yeah, I think that's the best approach. I mean, in anything really in life, you know, it's like when I was a bouncer, man, I I know I talk about this, people hate it, but guys who were really super calm and spoke really even toned when Mm -hmm. everyone else around them is freaking out Mm -hmm. and yelling and, you know, the guy that's calm makes me nervous because he's not freaking out. And I think that's in our DNA too, as well. When Mm -hmm. something traumatic happens, you'll see a lot of people where they don't react. They're freaking out inside, but on the outside, Mm -hmm. they look like they're going to church. And I think it's a way that we protect ourselves. I'm taking inventory. I'm looking at everything. What happens? This gets way out of hand. We, We need an exit. We need some way to live. What's happening, you know, assess the situation. As long as you're calm, you can do it. But I didn't see any sense freaking out because I can't assess shit when when I'm freaking out, you know? Yeah, I get <laughs> so, it. Yeah. 
Well, it's a terrifying account, Todd, but I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to come on and share what happened to you. Yeah, it's a little bit different story than what I've been hearing, but I tell you what, it's the honest God's truth. And um, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'll believe you because, you know, it's it's 1983 and there wasn't a whole lot of homes around in that area. And, and it was pretty remote still and all this. I'm like, you know, I don't care if you don't believe me. It happened. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't try to convince anybody. I just want to tell my story and I'm really I really appreciate that I actually got to say something and, and finally get the truth out and let people know what happened. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean my demeanor in school, I just I was really after all that I was just you know, I didn't leave the house very often. I stayed at home quite a bit and I was just scared. You know, trying to process what happened to me. So No, I get it. Who could blame you? Yeah, I appreciate it, Wes. Thank you very much. Thanks, Todd. Keep your head up. And that's it for tonight, everyone. Remember, if you've had an encounter, shoot me an email. My email address is wes at sasquatchronicles.com. If you get a chance, check out sasquatchronicles.com. You can become a member and get additional shows. Thank you so much for listening, and I will be back on Sunday for the members. Have a great night, everyone. Save me from myself